Yes, looks good. All right, take it away then. So, first of all, I want to say uh, thank everyone for the great discussion this morning. You know, Clay, for the thorough review of the assessment, I think that um, saved me some trouble for things to explain, but it'll help this be a good capstone of all that we've heard about. And also point out on that uh, fishery overview that Chip just displayed, that's something that we hope the council comes to see as a useful tool as you're having questions as we work on amendments that can take a while. And it's something we develop, Chip develops, he's been great with that, and it can have all kinds of other information added to it. So as you come up with things that you think you'd really like to know, just uh, give us a shout and we'll incorporate it in there to help keep it and be helpful for you. So with that, what I wanna do is move into this uh, pictorial tour of what the assessment shows. Um, really born from the realization that there is a lot of misunderstanding uh, between what's going on in the assessment and what it shows versus what people see on the water. You know, we've heard for quite a while this perception that the council doesn't, doesn't uh, recognize how many fish are out there and that perhaps the science doesn't show how many fish are out there. And, you know, and I think the foundation Clay gave this morning pretty well shows that that's um, not fully true. The assessment does show the stock is at an all time high abundance, which is definitely a very important point. So, which is in fact the first point. So you recall this picture that Clay was uh, showing earlier. This is figure 14 from the stock assessment. And it does show the stock is at record abundance. Now, you know, Clay mentioned these earlier years. And so what I did here in this is I've sort of grayed them out because they are not as well informed by the data as the more recent situations. Um, just a few of the points I put in there to describe it. The headboat was separated out as its own catch in 78. As Clay mentioned, the headboat survey, fishery dependent survey, actually started in 1976. But, you know, we have MRIP that came online in 81. We have some ages in 78. There's a pretty good run of headboat ages with decent sample sizes from 78 to, you know, mid late 80s. And then the ages go away for a while, which I think is another point Clay made. He did mention, you know, there were ages earlier in the fishery, which we presume really helped inform what this population looked like in this grayish area. Uh, in 2004, the ages come on strong across all the fisheries. We have our independent surveys coming on in 2010. We've had, uh, I think 2012, the video comes on. So this period here, we really do have a lot more of the data that's considered the best to have for a fishery to really understand what's going on out there. But as we all know, we do have, you know, a fishery here that relies a lot upon discards and we know less about discards than we do landed catch, uh, primarily because no one's there to observe them and measure them. And the other issue is links aren't all that informative about age. So what we'd really love to have is some otoliths from those discarded fish, but you know, that's a pretty tough lift as well. But with that said, you know, we sort of have the data period and then we have the inferred period. And one thing we have to show here right off the bat is you look in the, the last few years, the population that we're seeing right now, this population is at an all time high. As Chester said, it's more than he's seen in 40 years. And this assessment totally shows that. Um, it's actually higher than any of this, you know, data intensive period. So it's not only higher than the period when we sort of think we might have an idea of what the stock looks like. It's higher than any of the periods when we actually have the more robust data to tell us what it is. But if you notice, most of this is made up of the reds and the oranges. Those are ages one, two, three. So it's a very young population as has been stated. I'll also point out too, one of the issues is that you could look at 2020 and say, man, the stock's declining. Bear in mind that we don't have any surveys that tell us how abundant the age one fish are. So the number of fish that's in the population for 2020 age one is based on this number over here, this long-term estimate of what recruitment might be. So what is likely to happen is when we get some more data, we'll know more about this cohort and we'll see that recruitment estimate potentially change. We hope that it's like recent years and it goes up here obviously, but again, no one knows what future recruitment looks like. So that's anyone's guess really as to what this number is actually gonna do. But what it does tell you is that you should take this drop from here to here uh, with a little bit of grain of salt because we really are just assuming what the recruits are in 2020. <clears throat> 
The other point to make is that the biomass is also at all time highs. If this is the similar figure, but instead of numbers of fish, it's actually the stock biomass. And we can see that the biomass is as high as it's been at every time since going back to say 1980. So we got to go back into this sort of pre data period to really see a stock with a higher biomass than what we're seeing. And you'll also notice that unlike the the numbers where you see the big colors down on the bottom with biomass, obviously you see more of the big colors up on the top with the higher, uh, heavier, older fish. But the point here being is that both biomass and numbers are at record levels. And the assessment supports this along with all of the public testimony we've heard. But the stock is young. SSB has not recovered as much as biomass. You know, Clay mentioned this earlier. So here's a couple more figures from the stock assessment. Um, we're looking at total biomass here on the left, we're at 78% of the biomass that's expected at F30. So consider that the goal, overall stock biomass, we're getting pretty close. But if you look at the SSB, and in this stock, we're using the proxy of total egg production, we're at 59% of the MSST, so the minimum stock size threshold. So we're a little over halfway toward declaring the stock not overfished. And we're at 44% percent of the target, which is the egg production expected at MSY based on our proxy of F30 for MSY. So we're not quite halfway to rebuilding the population. And I highlighted these two lines because they're important in a rebuilding plan. One is overfished, that's based on MSST and that's the purple. Once we cross that, the stock won't be overfished. But the rebuilding plan doesn't end and the stock's not rebuilt until we reach this green line which is the level of the stock being rebuilt. So that's one of the fundamental factors of a rebuilding plan under the Magnuson Act. It's not enough just to get your stock to where it's not overfished. Once you're in a rebuilding plan, you have to get your stock back to that level that's capable of producing MSY. So again, looking at a young stock, while we're at all time high abundance, we do still have some ways to go in terms of recovering the overall spawning population and the egg production that we presume is necessary at this reference point. And another way of reinforcing that point is to look at the numbers three ways. We have lots of age one fish recently. So the recruitment is shown in the blue area plot. And what you see is this early period where we're crunching along at this assumed average level of recruitment. We had some spikes in the earlier years, but we have a population that, that we know got fished down and we know the recruitment got low. But we had a few interesting events in recent years. So here is the 2007, eight, nine recruitment. You know, back when we were first dealing with red snapper being overfished, we were talking about those various area closures as mentioned earlier, and this stock produced some amazing year classes. And you see them right here. What happened at that time is the regulations were not as stringent as they are now, and this population really got fished down. These year classes themselves got fished pretty hard. Um, in a couple of years, you had the age three fish in those times, which is shown here as the red line. So this is just all the fish in the population that are age three or older summed up. So it leaves out the ones, follows a similar pattern, but a little shift because we're talking about three and older. So what you can see is after the uh, good recruitment here in the blue, the three and older spiked up, that's to be expected, but they dropped really quick. They were fished really hard here in the late 00s. Uh, and in, I think 08 and 09, the age three cohort in both of those years supported something like, you know, like 50% of the abundance of those fish was removed by the catch in those years. So that's a pretty high load on a particular cohort. And what happened is they got driven down. What that did overall, when we look at the green, the 10 plus is, you really didn't see much spike in 10 plus abundance that you would expect a little bit because you know we're a little bit higher, but it was kind of slow. Now, moving out to the more recent period, we see this big area of blue, lots of recruits. Uh, we know that we have very stringent regulations in place on a red snapper now. And what that's done is that's driven this three plus population way up. Um, in fact, it's higher than any period really we've seen other than a short blip here. So we're definitely seeing more three plus population. That's the fish that fishermen are really seeing. So they are indeed seeing more fish than any time anybody can remember. And again, I'll make the point of the terminal year issue. I wouldn't put a whole lot of stock in this little drop. We don't know a whole lot about those cohorts yet. So we're, we're waiting to see where that will go. 
And I'll point out here on the bottom, you look at the greens, the 10 plus still has quite a ways to go. Um, and that's really about the rebuilding. This is what the rebuilding is intended to do. We, we start out kind of slow and we got to build the threes before we build the tens. That's why we've got a 244 rebuilding target because with a long lived fish, we know it's going to take time to rebuild this entire age structure. So I know there's a lot of concern been expressed that the stock's not over, not uh, recovered, it's still overfished. How can that be? This is sort of why, because we're our recovery is young, it's early, and we're still waiting for this uh, population to get older. But it doesn't mean that we're not on track, and it doesn't mean that we're not having a lot of good things happen in the population. One thing we are seeing also is a lot of big fish. And this has been an age-old question with snapper, and the reality is long does not equal old when you're dealing with red snapper. The best parallel that works often to people um, a little more familiar with inshore fisheries is it's a lot like red drum. These fish grow pretty fast early in their life and then they re reach their asymptotic size pretty young and they just don't get a lot longer, but they do get bigger. And the best way I can think of explaining this to people is to say, how many of you are the same height you were when you were 18 years old, but how many of you are the same weight you were when you were 18 years old? Uh, most humans are kind of like me, I'm the same height I was when I graduated high school, but unfortunately to say my uh, biomass is quite a bit heavier than what it was when I graduated high school at 18 years old. These fish are doing a lot of the same thing. So the challenge there though, is a fisherman catches a fish that's 23, 24 inches, well, you know, maybe that's a decent sized fish. But as we see here in the red, that fish could be about two and a half years old, or it could be maybe eight years old. You catch a 28, 30 inch fish, you don't really know if that fish is three or four years old. You know, three years old is shown in the green or maybe four to 20 is shown in the blue. That's a big challenge when you're managing red snapper because we're, we're just kind of naturally uh, tend to believe as fishermen that you catch a big long fish and he's maybe an old fish. But really what you gotta catch a fish is, you know, big and long. He needs to be heavy and old. I mean, heavy and long before you really can assume that the fish is old. And this is why it's so important that we have those age samples. Um, and this is a pattern that's common for our tropical fish. Uh, you know, in the Northeast, they rely upon things like age length keys, um, you know, and sampling more lengths than ages and using a conversion. We really rely on random ages because of this very pattern. Lengths are simply not informative about age. We need to have those otoliths. And we also need to factor this in to perceptions of what's going on in the fishery. There's a lot of these 28, 30 inch fish being caught. A lot of those fish are probably relatively young. If you recall their earlier uh, figure showing just how abundant those three year old fish are. They are really abundant. A lot of those fish are young. And that's what I think a lot of people are seeing. So quick summary of sort of what the assessment says, the stock is rebuilding and it's largely as expected. We have a target of 2044. As I said, that's to allow this population to expand. What that means is we've got a lot of years ahead of us of seeing a lot of fish in the population while the age expansion continues. And we do have to get a handle on discards. This has been a key point in the discussion today to make sure that we can continue this expansion without losing our headway due to the discard losses. The stock is absolutely at a record high abundance in biomass. I'll say at least relative to the observed history. Um, what it looked like back in 1950, as Clay said, is really hard to know because we can't go back, we can't look, we don't know what was in the water, we don't know very well what was even caught, and we don't have a lot of age information to tell us about it. So we've got a lot of assumptions built into trying to figure out what it really looked like. But we do know the SSB not quite recovered as far as overall biomass. And we do know that more fish equals more encounters. And this is just an unfortunate reality of rebuilding. And it's why it makes rebuilding and post rebuilding regulations seem so different from whatever the conditions were when you went into rebuilding. When there aren't a lot of fish, it really doesn't matter a whole lot what your regulations are because nobody's catching them. When there are a lot of fish, then suddenly everyone is catching fish and there's a lot more encounters and things really get out of control in a hurry. And that's just a factor of every rebuilding population I've ever dealt with. Um, 
when we look at the recent recruitment, we see it's been very strong. There's no guarantees this will continue, as stated. Um, no guarantees that it won't. So here we have an assumption that carries a lot of risk, and it probably is something the council wants to weigh in on and consider its risk with that assumption. We do see the recruitment is two and a half times higher than long-term expectation. And if you consider the second um, projections plot that Chip showed using the high recruitment, you see how much population that puts out there relative to what we've ever seen or even assumed historically. We saw very high catches um, that fished down the 2006, 2008 spike in the population, spike in recruitment. Um, that's certainly something we should guard against in the future for the current recruits that we're seeing. And as I sort of said, and has come out earlier today, this strong recruitment is good for the stock. It's good for rebuilding, but it's tough for management. It's resulting in high discards and it's creating a real challenge for the council. We're seeing increasing age composition. Uh, it's early yet, more progress yet to be made on 10 plus. As you can get into theories of big old fat females and all that stuff, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out as this population begins to get older. And as we really start to think about how much SPR is necessary for a stock like this. And finally, we're seeing plenty of big old fish in the population. Well, I won't say old yet, they're big fish. They're long fish. That doesn't necessarily mean that they are old fish. And I think that's very important to keep in mind. That's what the assessment shows us. Now, the last bit I have here is really the past and future. And so this is the figure that was in the overview. And it's something that at least for me, when dealing with a situation like this, or really any stock assessment, I find it very useful to put the projections of the future and the estimates of the past together to really give us a holistic picture of what this population is doing and, and how the future measures up with what we know. The future is all predicted. It's all assumed and we're hoping it'll turn out. The past is our best guess of what we know. And in this assessment, we sort of know this middle period in here uh, is the best guess really of what we know. So first of all, remember the spike of recruits 2006, 2008. So thanks to those good year classes, we had a big spike in catch. So this is the thousand pounds whole weight fishery catch. Um, as you notice, that was short lived. This was a true catch spike. It dropped right down. It dropped down for a couple of things. One reason was we put in very strict regulations. So that drove the blue down. But you'll notice the red, the discards, didn't stay up high. Um, the reds, you know, the discards, the total size of this really tells you how many fish are being encountered by the overall fishery. And that didn't stay up because there weren't as many fish in the population here after that spike. It's because, as I said, how many were caught? You know, 50% of the abundance of age threes that existed in 08 and 09 were removed in those years from the catch. So that, that really slowed down seeing any increases in population. They were born, they entered the fishery, they went through the gauntlet, they got removed. So they didn't contribute to really long-term growth as we would have hoped. They contributed some, and maybe those fish being you know, older today is contributing to some of this increased recruitment that we see. And that brings us to the green then, the increased recruitment. We see, as we talked about, big increase in the three plus population, spikes in recruitments. What this is doing is shown right here. We have a severe discard problem in this fishery, very extremely high. I'll also point out too, look at um, just recently, look at this level, these couple of spikes. Notice how this is higher than really the general tendency of the long term. There are a few better spikes, but look at it relative to where we think this population is going. So this is gonna be a, a pretty serious perception issue the council is gonna to have to grapple with going forward. What the fishermen are encountering, what they're seeing in the population right now, what they saw the last few years, what they're inevitably gonna see this year is much higher than what the estimates say this population is gonna be like in terms of what can be removed in future years, when we get to the end of rebuilding, notice this, this spike, much higher than this. That's a key issue the council is going to have to deal with in, in terms of establishing realistic expectations. And I think getting at the question that Tony mentioned about what is our goal? And, you know, our goal within Red Snapper, to me, cannot be separated from our goal within the overall snapper grouper fishery. One of the reasons we have this spike here in recent years is because we allow the rest of the snapper grouper fishery to exist 
the other 361 days of the year when you can fish but not keep a red snapper. We mentioned earlier, the AP mentioned it, I think Jimmy did and Clay acknowledged it, the efforts to put in various area closures, which probably would have brought down red snapper discards, but the cost would have been enormous to the rest of the snapper grouper fishery. So I think as we consider where we're going, we've got to consider not just red snapper, but the overall snapper grouper fishery as well, because this is one part of a larger complex. That's why it makes it so vastly different than other fisheries, than a king mackerel fishery, or as Tony mentioned, you know, mid-Atlantic dealing with black sea bass and, and summer flounder. We have this multi-species fishery creates a serious challenge. Um, I'll move on now to the F rebuild. So we're now fishing this stock on our F rebuild at 98% of FMSY. So we are pushing the fishing mortality rate about as far as you can push it. A um, couple of things that means is there's not likely going to be an increase in the allowable F once the stock is rebuilt. Now that could change if we choose a different F rebuild moving forward um, as we evaluate this rebuilding plan. But we know that the population, given the expected recruitment, is not going to give us a big windfall. So there's no huge spike in the population that's becoming here once we get past this point where the stock is rebuilt, that suddenly is gonna support a fishery that you know, looks like the total removals that fishermen saw in the recent years or that they saw in the late OOs. The estimates all show us that's not likely. Um, maybe climate change is having an impact, maybe red snapper are evolving, maybe future recruitment will be much higher and we will support a much greater fishery, but we'll probably need to see that con current recruitment continue over a longer period before we're really comfortable with taking that full risk. Um, also notice that the expected future total yield that we're getting, when you look at the blue and the red here with this uh, kind of tannish colored line, you know, that's fairly consistent with the past productivity on average of the fishery. But a lot of that, if we don't change things in the fishery, is going to be lost to this red, which is the discards. So the goal to having a fishery with a lot more fish being put in the cooler than being put back in the water and dying is shifting these discards into landings. Um, the AP seems to understand that well. Uh, Jimmy mentioned some of the things they've thought about in terms of gear changes and behavioral changes that might help do this. And I think as the council considers long-term management, that's gonna be something they really have to focus on and consider how we can do this effectively. How do we do this for our red snapper within the context of that larger snapper group or fishery that's really part of our goals and objectives? And then we'll also see that recent landings here. So if we look at the last couple of years and you look at this blue line that lines up, here's the recent landings here. It's around the dotted line. Here's where we see landings getting long-term in the future. If we don't deal with discards, they're pretty close to what we expect to get out of the rebuilt population. So that recent high R has really helped us get there um, and, and to give us some decent landings out of this population. But I think, you know, what this tells us is realistically, if you're not happy with the level of landings now under the status quo management, the, the regulations that, that allow these discards, you're probably not going to be happy with where we are even when the stock is rebuilt. So what I'm trying to do here is just, you know, really make the case that a big problem the council is going to have to come to grips with and we're going to have to find a solution for is really shown in this red here. You know, we've got to deal with these discard losses. And the important thing to keep in mind, I think all of you guys know, this is a hook and line fishery. It's predominantly recreational, but even the commercial is hook and line. Fisheries like that respond strongly to abundance. You see it right here on paper as what happened in 2006, 2008. We see it right now in the discards with the high and recruitment. So this fishery responds to abundance. So a lot of fish out there is going to be a lot of encounters. A lot of encounters is going to be a lot of discards. We've got to come up with a way of dealing with that so that we don't have the discards jeopardize our overall rebuilding effort. And so I, I think I addressed the number of the issues that come up and the um, comments that we have heard, and I think, you know, because Tony mentioned that question and we said we would look at that, where are we going? 
you know, and, and I tried to get on that. And, you know, the assumptions of future recruitment are certainly going to play into this. You know, one thing we know, if we assume future recruitment at too low of a level, we assume we're going to get discards here, as we see in the projections, but we get discards more like we've seen in the last few years, then it's going to be that much harder for council to be managing. So on one hand, it is a a risk decision to be made, and it does have something to do with where the stock's going to go, but I think it's going to directly affect how how successful the council can be in managing. If we get estimates of future recruitment wrong, given the issues in this fishery, it may not play out the same as it does in many other stocks, and certainly in more of a single species directed fishery stock where fish can be thrown back and live. And so that's the uh, conclusion of the presentation.